Let's go. Let's start. Number eight. Gotta get my cheat sheet out here. Here we go. Colin, quick question. Are those the same denominators? Colin here? Yeah, I've got the mute. No. Senior quote right there. Not are they the same denominators or no? No. No. Okay. So we need to get a common denominator. All right. And I think as I, I have a good feeling with you guys here that the letters aren't too bad. It's the numbers that you maybe struggle with finding a common denominator with. And I get that because I probably didn't do the best of job describing that yesterday, but they both have an A in it. Anybody remember which one do I take out? The one with the highest exponent. So this is going to have an A to the third in it. And it's also got what variable that I can't forget about. It also has a B in there, okay? Just because both fractions don't have a B doesn't mean it goes in your, doesn't go in your common denominator. All right, let's start talking about these numbers then. I have 6 and 14. You guys want to find the smallest number that both go into. The smallest number. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick here because I know it's tough when the numbers get bigger and bigger. What's the, what's the bigger of the two numbers up here? 14, right? So I start with that. Does 6 go into 14? No, now I start going multiples of 14. So 14 times 2, 28. Does 6 go into 28? No, keep going. 14 times 3, which I believe is 42. Does 6 go into 42? Yeah. There we go. Okay, so that's probably the easiest way. Start with the bigger number and keep doing multiples of it till the other number goes into it. All right, everybody good there? All right, so now I take my common denominator and multiply each fraction by it. All good? Okay, let me turn it over to you guys. Here we go, 13. Here we go, Sophia. Remember, the denominator is going to cancel out. So ready, 6 and 42, what's left? Go ahead, if you gotta get the calc out, get it out. Six into 42. Seven over 10. Oh, yep, so seven, ready? A on the bottom, A to the third on top, what's left? A squared. Okay, A squared. B on the bottom, B on top. Good, good, good job. So I'm left with seven A squared times what, Sophia? Five. Five, and what are you gonna end up with there? Got it. Everybody good? Remember, the denominators are always cancel out. That, it's just a matter of what's left on top. So let's do it one more time on the right. Here we go. What's left on top now? What it will be left on top now? Now I'm getting in a groove. Here we go. 14. Eliana, go ahead. Ready? I got 14 into 42. Good. A to the third, A to the third. They both cancel each other out. And I'm just left with still? The B. The B, yep. Everyone good? You want to multiply that for me, Alan? 3B squared times 3B. So would that be 9B cubed? You got it. Be confident. You got it. And now you look to factor and cross out, if you can, if you can. Sometimes you can't. Uh, I don't know. Can anybody think of a number that I can take out of 35 and 9? Me neither. I can't figure out a number either. That's about as far as we're going to go here. It's about as far as we can go. Okay. Questions from you guys there? A little bit better with the numbers here. Okay. Easiest way is just, I know it's, I hate tricks and math telling you tricks, but pick the bigger number and keep multiplying by one, two, three, and see if the other one goes in. All good? Anybody questions at home? Because I'm going to go to a tougher one now. That was on the homework. Woo! How are my other kids doing here? All gone. Good. See you later. Okay, next up. 
Ooh, look at all those, huh? I think we only had the evens, I think. Yeah, 22, 24, 26. All right. Anybody have a, I'll go 24. How about 24? Uh-oh, there's three of them. Don't start sweating, please. Don't start getting nervous. Oh, three denominators. Okay, here we go. Let's start with the numbers, six and 10. Common denominator for six and 10. Think about what we just did. Six and 10, common denominator. Here we go. Going, Anna, what do you got for me today? Six and ten. You don't want the smallest number that go, you want the smallest number that both of these go into. Thirty. Thirty. Okay. Let me just make a quick comment. Thirty is correct. Let's say you didn't think about thirty and you automatically went sixty. That's fine. You're still going to be. You just. You'll just have to do a little bit more simplifying at the end. That's it. So if you pick thirty, if you pick sixty, you're, you're going to be okay, guys. You're going to be okay. All right, so if you don't get the right common denominator at first, that's not a big deal. All right, let's see. All right, Anna, ready? What should I put? I got A, A squared, and A. A squared. A squared. Oh, oh, sorry. And B squared. B squared. There's your common denominator, everybody. Good deal. Anybody, anybody ask questions home here? Getting that common denominator. Okay, let's multiply all of them by it then. Ready? First one, 30. A squared, B squared. You know that 6A is going to be gone. It's just a matter of what's left on top for me. What's going to be left on top? Here we go. Five. Hi, Ella. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm unbelievable. Go ahead. So 6A is going to be gone. So it would just be 6? Well, if you... Oh, yeah. Remember, you're dividing. So 6 into 30. Five, yep. Always the always the bottom. So then, go ahead. So it, the A's would cancel out, right? So I just be A. Great job. And then B squared. Awesome. Now the tough part maybe is can you multiply that with five? Because that's what I'm gonna write down. Five so five A B squared times five B. Well, so then it would be Great. There we go. Good. All right. Middle one. Bless you. You all right? Yeah. Okay. Nobody panic. It's okay. That was my biggest worry coming into the school year, especially when I have teach freshmen. Somebody was going to cough or sneeze and be like, ah! jump out the window. Woo. Let's go home. Sophia, you're back up for me. You're doing a nice job with these. What's left? 10A squared on the bottom, 30A squared, B squared on top. What are you left with? Um, 10? Where'd you get the 10 from? Oh, you're, you're, uh, hold on. Don't do everything at once. Don't be a champ yet. Okay, ready? 10 in the 30. Um, three. Yep, A squared's canceled. So you're just left with the B squared. Now, okay, go, what are you left with here? I think we might have been confused at first. So 10 in the 30 is 3, right? Yeah. The A squared's canceled. And you're left with B squared. So now I need 3B squared times 3B. Oh, um, 9. Yep. You okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just making sure. I don't want to lose you because you're doing you were doing a nice job here. Okay, next one. Last one. What's left? Come on, let's finish this up because we got to go hardcore today. Oh, four. Where are we going in here? Nick. Hi, Nick. Hello. How you doing? Good. How are you? Uh, I'm doing great. Big weekend plans? Uh, not really. No. Clubs are shut down, so you can't go clubbing with the boys. So it's tough. All right, what's left? Um, 
30A is left. Okay, so A goes, and I'm left with just an A on top. B squared go. So all I'm left with is 30A times 2. 60A. What elementary school you go to? I went to Eagle. Eagle, wow. Okay. All grades are? Uh, I started in second, and then. Were you a Clark School kid before that? I was at Monte Cristi in Albany. Oh, one of those private school kids. Okay. Good. Questions, comments? Did you like it there? Yeah, but it wasn't really a good school because there were so little kids. It was like, I don't know, it was just one hallway. Like, so how many, like first grade, how many kids were in your class? There was like 15 or 20. That's and not, then that's not. That's a lot. As you go up, like it just the numbers got thinner, and it was just like it was K through twelve all in one building, and it was a tiny hallway. So you'd be like a senior, you'd have one so, teacher. So how many people graduated? Maybe what a dozen? Yeah, it was really small. But okay. I don't really mind it. But. All right, good talk. Just trying to learn a little more about my students. You know what I'm saying, kids at home. All right, everybody, good because I'm gonna up it now. You ready to go? You ready to raise the bar? Yes. <laughs> Everyone else ready to raise the bar? I can always count on you, Caroline. We good? Okay, let's do it. Let's raise the bar. We're still going to add and subtract today. Uh, we just got a little something different in the denominators now. Okay. So let's take a look at number one. Let's not talk about how to do it yet, but just what it looks like. Are they the same? Are those two denominators the same in number one? Exact same? No, they're not. Everyone agrees? Those aren't, those aren't the same denominators. And also, why is this different from yesterday? Yesterday, every single denominator we worked with just had multiplication in it. Now the denominator today has addition and subtraction in it. Okay, someone help me out here. Look at those two denominators in number one. What does it look like we could do to both of them? We've been doing this for two weeks, guys. What's it look like we could do to both denominators? Factor them. We could factor them. Everyone agrees? We could factor both. So that's what I want you to do first today with the denominators, is factor as many denominators as you can. And right now, we should have an A game for factoring right now. We've been doing it for two weeks now. A game. Let's see if we have an A game. Woo, here we go, 13. Sophia, you're on fire today. You want, can you factor both of them for me, Sophia? Um, X plus one, X minus one. One for one. What about the other one? X minus X, X plus X. Oh, X plus X. You're better than that. What do I always harp on you should do first? What should you look for first? What do they both have in common? Oh, well, oh, oh, oh. What do you want to do now? Um, pick out an X. Yep. This would be just X minus one. Okay. We good? Everyone else, we're okay? So factor what you can. There's no crossing out, by the way. You don't cross out an addition and subtraction problem to the very end, and we're not even close. So now it's time to get a common denominator. And this is going to be pretty easy today, I think, for you. All right, it's just the factoring part maybe that will get you. Common denominator. Look at both denominators. What do they have in common? What do they match? Name the one thing that matches in both denominators. Settle down. Oh, here we go, Donovan. Name one thing that matches in both denominators. The X minus one matches. There we go. So that'll go into my denominator. Everyone see that? Everybody good? Okay, that's it. Now, though, we left, we left some leftovers. There's some things we left behind. What, what did we leave behind? 
the x and the x plus 1. Okay, so I need to put x plus 1 in there. And there was one other thing left over, which was the x. So what's in common needs to go in, and whatever was left over needs to go in. Everybody see that? Okay? After I factor, whatever was in common goes in, and whatever was left over goes in. There's your common denominator. The steps from here are the same as yesterday now. Take that fraction on the left, ready? And multiply it by the common denominator. X, X minus 1, and X plus 1. And you guys just got to figure out, like we did yesterday, what's left on top. Cross out the denominator and numerators and tell me what's left on top. Here we go. 12. Oh, Dan, here we go, big dog. Uh, you have two X left. Oh, good. Ready? Just slowly, can you go step by step how you got there? Because you're correct. Oh, yeah. I, uh, so I crossed out both uh, X plus 1. And then x minus one. Everyone see that? They're gone. What was left, Dan? Just the x. X times? Two. Two. And that's how we got 2x. Good? Nope. This is the same as yesterday, right? All right. Let's do it again. Right side. I got x, x minus one, and I got x plus one. Okay, same thing. What's going to be left up top? Because I know the numerator, the denominator is gone. That's going to be gone. Just a matter of what's left on top. Here we go. Eight. Colin, you're up. Unmute that mic. Um, it's going to be three. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Start it. Start from scratch. What's what's so getting crossed out? Take out the x minus 1 and the x. Yep. And then what's left over? 3x plus 1. Okay, now distribute, and what do you end up with? 3x plus 3. Good. And then all I need is to combine like terms up top. 5x plus 3 all over x x minus 1, x plus 1. I always said, don't be a hero. You don't need to distribute again or double distribute. Uh, anything I can factor. Factor or cross out at the end, anything? Or box it in. This is it. Yeah, you can't take anything from a 5 and a 3. You're done, kids. We're good. You guys all right? I'm going to do one more together and then I'm going to, we're going to stop holding hands and you're going to go off on your own. Okay. Look at the denominator. First of all, check. Are they the same denominators? No, but look in it. What can you do to both? I can factor those bad boys. Let's go. Need some help. Let's factor both first. Help me factor both denominators so I can see what the common one is. Oh boy, eight again, Colin. Let's go, unmute the mic. Um, you can do x minus one, x, I mean six. Yeah, you did. Plus six. Then you can take um, the x out of the other one. And? and x plus six. Good job. Good job. All right, here we go. Common denominator now. Eliana, here you go. What is common in both? Um, you have an X plus six in both? Yep, hold on. So I'm going to take out the X plus six. That's what's in common. Nothing else is in common. So now I got to put the leftovers. What are the leftovers, Eliana? Um, the x in front of the x plus 6 and the other x minus 6. Good job. Perfect. And there's your common denominator, guys. All right, so here we go. Last time I'll do this with you. 
multiply the whole thing by the common denominator. Sorry for the mess here. I'm trying to do different colors for you. All right. I think at this point, you guys can just tell me what's left over in the numerator now. What is left over in the numerator? Let's, let's just get to it. And if you don't know how I got that, just let me know. You ready in here? You ready, Anna? What's left? I'm 2x. Okay, 2x, because these two go with these two. I'm left with an x. 2 times x, 2x. Good. All right, I'm going to get somebody now. I'm going to get somebody now. Somebody's going to fall into a trap. I'm going to get you. I'm getting you. I'm guaranteeing it. Guaranteeing I'm going to get you. Oh, now I'm nervous. I hope he doesn't call on me. Please don't. I'm getting somebody here, Isaiah. I'm getting somebody. Yep. That doesn't bring me satisfaction, but I'm just telling you. <laughs> just telling you. Told you. Told you. Number, ge number generator knows. Yeah. All right. Um, he knows we were talking. Mm -hmm. Would you cross out the x minus 6? Cross the x minus 6? Well, yeah, no. Like, okay. So right. cross out x, x plus 6, and what's left? The, uh, the x minus 6. Okay. So here's my question, and here's the trap you're going to fall in. What do you think I should write now? Just x plus 6? Or would you distribute with a 1? So would it be x plus 6? I have no idea. Okay, so you got 1 times x minus 6, right? Yeah. But that's not a 1. That's not a 1. What We're doing subtraction. Everybody, we're doing subtraction, right? Mm -hmm. So he's not going to distribute the 1. You're going to distribute negative one. negative 1 through that whole thing. Everyone see that? With subtraction, you got to make sure you distribute the negative through. So what's it going to be, Isaiah? Uh, negative x and then plus 6. Yep, just soak that in right now, guys. Soak that in. It's subtraction only. you got to worry about that. We don't have to worry about that with addition. With subtraction, you got to make sure you distribute a negative number. Good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Nobody got it yet today, so don't worry. What am I left with on top? X plus six. Okay, my last question is box it in or keep going? Box it in or keep going? Caroline, box it in or keep going? Just keep it. You sure? Okay, let me ask you this, Caroline. Is there anything to fact is there anything to factor? No. No, you're right. So then I say, could I cross anything out? I don't think so. What's on top? Well, I guess the x plus six. Yeah, why not? Why is that why is that uh why are you very timid to cross those out? I don't know, I guess the parentheses, but then you just have a one, right? On top, yeah, but you okay? I can cross off those x plus sixes. Yeah. Is, was it not making you feel warm inside because I didn't put the x plus six on top in parentheses? I guess so. That makes you feel warm inside, makes you feel confident? Yeah, because then they really match. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're something else. All right. You got me there, though. You got me. Okay, they didn't have parentheses, so they didn't exactly match. So I do have a 1, and then x times x minus 6. Now I'm done. How do we feel about this? I know we've only done two, but now I am going to ask you guys to do the third one on your own. Nick, what's up? Uh, where does the 2x go? See in the yellow, it says 2x minus x. Okay, I combine those two. Oh, okay. Right? Like terms? Yep. 2x minus x. I'm left with 1x. Good question. All right, guys. Let's go. You guys are on to the next one. Cube. I'll just help you. Let's just help each other here, making sure we can factor these two, even though 
<clears throat> I'm about 90% confident most of you guys can factor. Colin, can you uh, factor both of those for me real quick? Yeah. Um... It'd be X plus three and X plus one. Good. I didn't want to say anything. I knew you could do it. X plus one. What about the second one? Um, be, uh, it'd be X plus four and X plus three. Nice job. Okay. I'm going to let you guys go on your own now. There. Find what the common denominator Find what the common denominator should be. You guys can do this. You got this. If you finish early, go to number four. Still got a lot of time left in class. I'm going to give you guys a few minutes, then I'll write my work up. If, you have, if you're stuck, unmute your mic and let me know. When you get there, 9 over x plus 1 and x plus 4. Okay? Got to have the correct, make sure you have the correct work down and 
Ask questions here. That's, remember, that's the key to success in this class. Ask questions. If you're going on to number four, I'm going to warn you. Remember, you got a minus sign there. So whenever you, the time is right, you have to distribute a negative one on number four. When the time is right, distribute a negative one there. And I'm just going to put the answer up in a minute or two. Let's see if you can get just get to the final answer. You got it. Feeling any better? No. Let me get my answer key. Common denominator is good. We had 9 plus 3x plus. Oh, hold on. That's 6 there. No, it's supposed to be 5, right? Oh, yeah. Minus 5, yep, yeah, and then try it from there. Because you should be able to back that here until. So far, yeah, you're good. Yeah, you're good so far. You just got that last fraction. Now make sure you distribute a negative one and combine all your like terms. Good. Here, where are we gonna stop? Uh, right here. Okay. So we'll take your. So you got that. Okay. What would, what, do, what do they have in common? Oh, right. Yeah. What's in common in each of them? So the x plus two. And they also have another thing in common too now. X plus five. Yep, X plus two and X plus five. And now and go the through, multiply each of those by X plus two mm -hmm. and X plus five, and cross out. I, I do that, but I can't. So let this be right because I can't cross these. Up. Why not? Because. No, that's a, that should have been a plus sign. So I should take out a negative two. No, nope, hold on, hold on. You should have ended up with. 2x plus 10 on top. You got 9 and 6 give you 15. Minus 5 give you 10, right? So you should end up with 2x plus 10 to factor on top. Okay, then you should be good to go from there. How are we doing at home there on number 4? Just letting you know your cut for number 4. Before I put the final answer down, your common denominator for number four should have been x plus five and x plus two. Okay, that should have been your common denominator. And now let me just show you what should have been left for each fraction. Nothing should have been left on the first fraction, just the nine, because you crossed everything out. On the second fraction, you should be left with x plus two. So you end up with 3x plus 6. Good so far. And on the third and final fraction, you should have been left with an x plus 5. But remember, distribute a negative 1 through that. So there you should have gotten negative x and a negative 5 there. Okay, that's what should have been left on top. Mol combine all your like terms now. Ready? I got 9 plus 6, which is 15. 15 minus 5 is 10. And then 3x minus x is positive 2x. Everybody okay? We good? And then now I can factor the top. You can take out a 2 at the top.
And the last thing, x plus 5 and 5 plus x. Are those the same or are those opposites? Same or opposites? 5 plus x and x plus 5, they are opposites. So they can go. So here's my final answer for number 4. 2 over x plus 2. Okay, again, only way we're getting better is to try a few of those assignment problems at the bottom of that packet right now. Okay, that's the only way we're going to get better and bring your questions on Monday. All right, guys, going into the weekend, you know the deal. Nothing stronger than ginger ale, please. See you on Monday. I'll see you guys on Monday. See you guys on Tuesday. Bye, guys. Have a good weekend. Take care. Bye. Bye, guys. Behave, everybody. See you, boys. Do you have a favorite NFL team? Big Giants fan, unfortunately, but got to stick with them no matter I'm, what. I'm a Lions fan. So. You had a little worse. Yeah. But at least you got you got a better squad than we do, but yeah. they got to put it all together, right? Yeah. And catch a pass in the end zone. <laughs> Ready to go? No, I got to so... clean the desk. Hold on. Let me get class up here. Period six. Got your formulas down and everything? I hope so. Okay. I can promise that I'll do my best. <laughs>